Hey guys, so the financial technology sector, also known as fintech, is one that has been growing quite a lot over the past decade or so, especially in the past year, in 2020, due to the pandemic, as that did force a lot of people to start using fintech apps and fintech platforms to compensate for the inability to actually make physical transactions. And with the world continuing to move online and to digital payments, the fintech space and some of the main companies within that space are poised for very good growth in the coming 5-10 to 10 years and even further into the future. Many people do actually believe that traditional banking and the legacy financial systems that they do use uh, will eventually get phased out and replaced with fintech alternatives. And that means that some of the main fintech companies and some of the biggest companies in that space right now are poised to potentially take over that entire sector of the market. Now, fintech companies completely taking over the banking sector is the ultimate bull case for fintech companies. But I certainly do believe that even if that doesn't happen, then fintech companies definitely are going to grow a lot more in the future compared to the current size that they are right now. So I thought in today's video, I take a look at three of my favorite fintech companies that I personally like the look of. And I'll be looking at the main points around each of these companies and some of the main reasons why I believe they could be a good stock to buy and hold for the long term. If you do enjoy this video, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like as that does help out a lot and maybe even subscribe if you would like to see similar videos to this in the future. And apart from that, let's get right into it. So the first one here today is PayPal, ticker symbol PYPL. So many people probably already use PayPal themselves, but for those that don't, PayPal is an online payments platform that allows businesses and individuals to send and receive payments using just an email address. The platform allows you to transfer money worldwide without having to provide any financial details and is an electronic alternative to traditional money transfer methods. They do currently trade for $250 per share with a market cap right now of $293 billion. The PayPal platform offers a range of different financial services that range from online shopping payments, sending money quickly and securely, credit loans and cryptocurrency investing. This can all be accessed from the convenience of one digital wallet. And PayPal do now have 377 million active accounts from across the world, an impressive 24% increase year over year. PayPal's growth over the last few years has been really incredible and their revenue is up to $21.5 billion for 2020, which is up from $9.2 billion back in 2015, while operating margin has also increased from 21.1% to 25.1% in the same time period between 2015 and 2020. They did also launch their cryptocurrency segment of their business in October 2020 and do plan to expand this internationally in 2021. This has kept customers that are holding crypto very engaged with the platform and they have been logging in twice as often compared to before they bought the cryptocurrency. So there's no doubt that the global pandemic has benefited PayPal as they have gained many new users this year on the back of people looking for ways to make digital payments. However, this doesn't mean that PayPal will not continue to enjoy strong growth in the future. PayPal do believe that they are on track to reach 750 million total active accounts by 2025, growing at an estimated compound average growth rate of 15%. At the same time, they do believe that they will hit $50 billion revenue by 2025, growing at a compound average growth rate of 20% per year. So as you can see, this is still very impressive projected growth for PayPal. Kathy Wood and ARK Invest are very bullish on PayPal and have been buying aggressively in recent months. PayPal is now the second largest position in their ARK F fintech ETF and this ETF has performed extremely well over the last 12 months. So next up we've got Square, ticker symbol SQ. So Square is a company that operates in the financial and merchant services sector as well as the mobiles payment sector. They provide hardware and software for businesses to take point of sale payments while gaining useful insights from the sales data. They also own Cash App, which is a digital wallet for online payments and other financial services. Square do currently trade for $242 per share with a market cap of $110 billion. So before 2018, the POS and seller side of the business made up almost all of Square's revenue and profit. This side of the business has still been growing modestly since 2018, however Cash App has been the major driver of growth from 2018 and onwards. 
In 2017, Cash App was just a $47 million slice of the $824 million total gross profit, making up just 5.7% of Square's total gross profit for that year. In 2020, however, Cash App made up a $1.22 billion slice of Square's $2.73 billion total gross profit for that year, which is obviously a much more significant portion of the total gross profit for that year which is a much more significant 44.8% total gross profit for that year. Cash App has absolutely massive potential with addressable volume in the US alone being estimated at $9 trillion, including spending, saving and investing. This does represent a $60 billion revenue opportunity for Cash App in the US alone. Now that is obviously quite a stretch to get to that peak point. However, monthly active customers have been increasing quite rapidly. They have increased from 7 million in 2017 to 36 million in 2020, and also Square now have an acquisition cost of under $5, proving that they have a brilliant marketing and customer acquisition team at the company. Square have strong customer retention for Cash App, so users gradually tend to increase their usage of the main features like peer-to-peer transactions, direct deposits, and online transactions in general. On top of this, once a user is within the Cash App ecosystem, Square can start to monetize additional features such as cash card, stock investing, and also Bitcoin investing. This strong customer retention, coupled with low customer acquisition of under $5, means that Square enjoy high return on investment on each Cash App customer. After they have been on the platform for 24 months, Square have made a return on investment of between 4 and 10 on almost all customers. Now I mentioned the ARK-F ETF earlier for PayPal, but Square is in fact the biggest position in this ARK-F fintech ETF and the second biggest position in the ARK-K innovation ETF, showing that Cathie Wood and ARK Invest are extremely bullish on Square with it being their second biggest holding in total behind Tesla. Now the third and final company today is Shopify, ticker symbol SHOP. So Shopify allow customers to create their own e-commerce website to move their business online, utilizing all of the Shopify built-in features and apps to generate more sales and gain more customer insights. Shopify make it easy and affordable to start up a new online business, and they are growing at a fast rate alongside the growth of online shopping. They currently trade for $1,140 per share with a market cap of $141 billion. Now, everything you could possibly need and want to run an online business can be found on Shopify's platform. This does include custom domains, integrated payments dashboard, custom page designs and templates, integrated Google and Facebook ads, email marketing, and even business loans as well. Now, having all of this integrated together so flawlessly means that Shopify's customers won't need to go elsewhere to get additional features. This allows Shopify to generate multiple revenue streams from each customer as they expand their business. It's also great for customer retention and means that customers are reluctant to leave the platform. Everything that they could possibly need is available within Shopify and it would be a massive inconvenience to leave and set up elsewhere. So 2020 was a strong year for Shopify with revenue for the year being $2.9 billion, an 86% increase from 2019. Merchant Solutions revenue largely contributed to this, growing at an impressive 116% over the year to $2 billion in revenue. Net income was also up to $319 million compared to a loss of $124.8 million in 2019. And Shopify now also have the second largest market share for US e-commerce sales, right behind Amazon, with a market share of 8.6%. Now in the future, Shopify are looking to expand even further, increasing their revenue streams in different sectors. In the medium term, they plan to expand further internationally to get more international customers on board, as well as also growing their retail point of sale market. Looking further into the future, they do plan to have a full Shopify fulfillment network, support a shop app that they're working on, and also expand to the wholesale and B2B sector. So it is clear that the world is moving online, and this includes online shopping. The e-commerce industry is growing at a fast rate, and Shopify is the number one player when it comes to supporting businesses set up online. I believe that Shopify is only going to continue to grow as more and more businesses take advantage of Shopify's platform to sell their products online. 
So that is all for today's video guys. Please remember that these stocks that I picked today are just based on my own research and my own opinion. I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. Please make sure to always do your own research before you think about buying a stock. But with that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy this video and found it useful. Please remember to leave a like if you did enjoy it, as that does help out a lot. Be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see similar videos to this in the future. Drop me a comment, let me know what your favourite stock was from this video. And apart from that guys, thanks a lot for watching.